Hello, in this video I'm going to create a layout using a single 6x4 photo which is this month's theme on the UK Scrap Addicts blog. And so I have a vision of what I want my page to look like, which is going to include some vertical strips of torn paper. I'm using this new Heidi Swap 12 by 12 pad, and I want to use very soft blues and pinks as my colour theme. So I go through the pad, and I love that this pad is double sided and I just pick out some of my favourite patterns that I want to use both I want four papers to go down on the left hand side vertically the whole length and then I also want a couple just to match my 6x4 photograph this is an old photograph of my youngest this was taken back in 2013 and I really like the blues that he's wearing and I think that the blues and the pinks will complement the photograph. It was a really quick and easy layout that came together in about half an hour real time so I've just speeded the process video up a little bit. So all I do now is cut my strips of patterned paper um, because they came from a paper pad rather than the individual strips they have like a perforation where I've torn them out of the paper pad so I do just trim those off as well and then I think about if I want like this is an ombre paper and I want to make sure that I don't just cut the dark side off I want it going from light to dark and I decide that I picked out two pink papers and a blue paper and I actually want to use two of each and I decide that the black and white floral is really pretty so I want to save that for another page and I also decide instead of having the white background for half on the right hand side I really like this paper that's got black circles it just adds a lot more interest and I decided to go this route rather than doing some paints and mixed media so now all I'm doing now is tearing down the lengths of my strips and if you pull the paper away from you if you have a little experiment what you want to do is end up with the white being exposed along the torn edge so if you have the face of the paper that you want to use and then tear the little strip towards you that's what happens and then I have this paper that I pulled out and I really like it's a aquary colour but it does have a bit of a funny top that says today so I just made sure that all of that word was showing although probably had I seen that when I was picking out the paper I might have thought about it differently and either cut the paper differently or picked a different blue paper so now I'm just using a T ruler just to make sure that my first piece is put on square and then I'm using some glue and I mostly glue the straight edge and I start on the inner piece and just layer them up until I get to the final piece which is actually a bit too big so I decide how much of the pink second paper I want showing and then I just trim off the blue top piece to fit and that's roughly how I want my page to look so now I'm just going to match the photograph and I decide because the photo's got lots of blues I'm going to mat it in this really nice watercolour effect pink very very subtle pink colour first and then I'm going to then add a larger border with this chevron paper that has whites and blues and pinks in it and I want a nice wide border so you can see all of the colours on that I decided that I wanted to keep this layout quite soft so I didn't do any inking around the edge of any of the pieces of paper but that would definitely be a nice option and again when I'm gluing everything down I'm not putting glue right to the edge because I know I want to tuck some pieces under and I decide that I'm going to stick the matted photo on using some foam tape just to raise it up a little bit give it a bit more dimension and again I'm just using my two ruler that I got very cheaply just to make sure it's all nice and straight 
I then, one of the little tiny strips that I had torn off of one of the papers, on the reverse side, the pattern was a really nice black and white diagonal. So I just tear little pieces of those and tuck them inside the big torn strips just so that it's just poking through. I didn't want it to be too heavy because that is quite a dark black colour, but I think it adds a lot of interest. It's one of my favourite techniques to do when I'm using torn paper is just to go in and add tiny little other bits of contrasting colours. I then decide that to match this black I'm going to use a quite heavy black thickers. These are glitter thickers and I really like that they're tall and thin so it adds impact but it doesn't take up too much space when you're writing and it also had some of these nice asterisks. There was three of them so I decided to put them near where the black and white diagonal paper joined in a triangle around the photograph just to frame it and add some more interest and just to bring that darkness through. I then decide that I want some florals and I find this black and white beautiful floral paper that I'm going to just go away and fussy cut so I'll do that off screen because it does take a while. I sit and watch television as I fussy cut some flowers I decided I only wanted three of them and that was just a tiny piece of fussy cut leaves that I poke out of the flowers and I roughly put them around where the asterisks are. The, this large piece I again pop up on foam just to give it more dimension and work out where I want it to go. I'm tucking it under the asterisks to form my triangle of embellishment clusters. I then found these three um, tags that I had already pre-cut quite some while ago and they were perfect colours. There's a nice big rectangular blue one, then a grey scalloped one and a small rectangular pink one and I'm just going to put that down in the bottom right hand corner and layer them up and add the date with a date stamp. That's just a very, very cheap date stamp that I got from the pound shop. My, I do like to use my self-inking date, but that only goes back to 2016, so I bought this stamp some years ago, and I think it goes back to about 2012, something like that, and I do have an even older one that maybe goes back to like 2005, so that is something that you need to watch when you're using roller date stamps. I then have pulled out some very old, almost used up Maggie Holmes sticker sheets because I don't have any embellishments that go with this particular collection but I thought Maggie Holmes would have the same soft aquas and pinks colours and I pull out some word stickers and some label stickers as well as a piece of darker chipboard that I put on the bottom white corner just to add a bit more black and I layer up some of the word stickers and label stickers around the photograph and then I also tuck some under the torn paper strips. And I don't want to make the page too heavy because the colours are such beautiful muted colours. I don't actually feel that it needs lots, just the pops of black. I stick a black heart down in the bottom corner as well because I didn't have any more asterisks and I wanted just something a bit more of a heavier, small black element. I then found these beautiful, the sort of minty green or sea green, but they really match my third patterned paper that I've used, the slightly bluey greeny colour. So I just scatter those around and I'm, my wet glue was blocked up and I couldn't be bothered to try and find a needle thin enough to unblock it, so I'll go and do that later. So instead I use these um, glue dots to attach my sequins. I think probably on hindsight wet glue is definitely the way I prefer to stick my sequins down but this worked fine. Um, I also missed that I have put a little ribbon bow down on the bottom left corner of the photograph in by the flower just for a bit more texture and so basically I scatter my Sequins, I try and make them random, but I do put them in groups of three or five or one. I like to use odd numbers. I just find it works easier and you can form those triangles to make sure that you're drawing the eye where you would like to go. And then I feel that 
this page is more or less complete it's got enough interest it's got the date it's got the title and the last thing I do is get some black drawing ink and I have this tiny little cotton bud thing that I use and it produces beautiful very very delicate black ink splatters if you have a look on the close-ups that I will leave you with you'll be able to see because I wanted to use black ink because it stands out but I didn't want to do the big heavy blobs of black I just wanted a very delicate splatter so that's perfect tool for doing that so I hope you enjoyed this very quick simple process video please do give it a try and I'll leave you with some close-ups. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!